you. What? All right. Um. So, uh, we got season two, episode eight, uh, of Idiot Abroad, coming home. Hmm. Okay. Okay. He's coming back home. Yes, he is. Yeah, man. It's been quite a bucket list, man. He's done a lot. Definitely. He's done a lot more than I expected. Oh, I'm proud yeah, of Carl. I'm yeah, proud of him. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, he had topped many feats. Um, he did not bungee jump. No, no. He got on a plane, though. Yeah, a moving plane. And did cartwheels and backflips yeah. and all types of. It was, it was, it was incredible. Was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Definitely a lot of things that we didn't think he'd do. And the fermented fish ate that. I can't believe he put it in his mouth. Yeah, he put it in his mouth. He spit it out. <laughs> he threw it up. <laughs> I don't think it went in his stomach. Oh man, yeah man, in the civil wrestling, it's been a lot, it's been a lot. But alright man, uh, you ready? Yep. Let's go man, let's go. Oops. The Bucket List, The Bucket List. See the glaciers before they melt. Like go so. on African safari. Encounter the world's largest mammal. Ultimate things to do before you die. Yeah, man. Right. I traveled right across the other side of the world. It wasn't what I pictured. I'd like to go to Hawaii on my bucket list. <laughs> I go, you know, I might you know, be a lot of traveling. It's horrible. Yeah, travel to some beaches. I was proper struggling. I was losing weight and I was starving. That's wrong. I didn't eat shit. That does stink. Have a whiff of that. I like the Have a whiff of that. The best of everything. There you go. Oh, I haven't quite got over it. Well, I was said that there was that thing because it doesn't know what's going on. Got a lot of alcohol. Oh, just drink. Why are you just... Just, it, yeah, just get some alcohol. Yeah. I don't need to do that. You know, I would do that, man. I would I'd never do that. You wouldn't do that? Hell I would do that, man. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to episode eight of An Idiot Abroad 2. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the star of the show, the little round-headed twonk, <laughs> that is, Carl Pilkington. What up, man? Right. <laughs> well, right. Carl's been around the world again. Um, thank you for your questions. We're going to get to those. Uh, but first, I want to ask, why did you do it again? You swore you'd never do it again. You swore on camera. <laughs> the job, innit? Just got to earn a living. I'm in a programme called Idiot Abroad. Job offers aren't, you know, whizzing in. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> no. Shark diving. Oh my god. I wouldn't do that either. Private island. You uh, chose the opportunity to be on a desert island. Private island. Um, how did you find that experience? I didn't like that. You, you saw it. It wasn't a great experience. It looked beautiful <laughs> to me. Fucking freezing. <laughs> just a bad start. It's like moving on a rainy day, this. I thought it was going to be sand. Oh, oh it's all bloody rock. I travelled right across the other side of the world. It's pissing it down. Mm. It wasn't what I pictured. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> when you have a dream, your head puts everything as you'd want it to be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure Ricky would be happy about this, Carl. I don't give a shit. There's no way he'd be putting up with this. <laughs> Pop it over, over your head. Keep warm. To be fair, stuck on a little <laughs> island, dressed in leaves, with it lashing it down, and you having to build a shelter like a chimp in a tree with gaffer tape wasn't my idea of heaven either, <laughs> to be honest. No. In my head, I was picturing... A bounty advert. A bounty advert. That's what I was picturing. White sand, blue sea, couple of palm trees. <laughs> Half a coconut with a bounty in it. Bounty in it. <laughs> 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 but the point of that is, on the bounty advert, it's 30 seconds. She's loving that bounty. Mm -hmm. She was pissed off after she'd eaten it. <laughs> and that's, that's the reality of it. Yeah. You don't look at the bigger picture, you go, that looks nice, and then you move on. One thing I've always wanted to do, and I hope I will get a chance to do it, which you did, the swimming with sharks. 
It looks amazing. That's all right, yeah. Good. OK. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. You brought that to life. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> you can half know how to paint a picture. <laughs> it's hard, though. Other cool. people will always have their <laughs> experience of it, and yeah. it's what they thought of it. Oh, hell no. This is mentalist. Never. I can see him. Doesn't look happy. <laughs> But, but tell us your experience, how you felt. Right, I felt sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good on boats. Uh, I thought I was going out sick. for a night to see a dolphin. Mm. Uh, it turns out it was two nights on a boat to see sharks. Yeah. Well, I'm not great on boats. I was in a room that stunk of prawns. I thought everybody's room smelled like that until someone came in and said, Jesus, <laughs> what's going on in here? <laughs> see, the thing is, people are only thinking these things are good because they've seen it on the telly. They don't see all the work. The gorillas don't see all the, the hassle, the work. Yeah. Is this how you imagined it? No. No, I didn't. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> the sat there, these nature programmes that are getting a gorilla, sat in the thing with its family, and they put nice music on it. All the sounds and stuff. Gorillas traipsing through with the family. Oh, look, it looks amazing. Body popping. It's in bright, sort of bright, you know, <laughs> HD. Oh, that's amazing. I'd love to be there. Like E.T. And in reality, e. my toes were bleeding, I had headache, I was being bit by mosquitoes, and I got there, and the first thing I saw was the mum gorilla sticking its finger up its kid's arse. <laughs> and you don't see that as, a, as an, something that you go, wow. Yeah, I think they will. I think people will watch this and go, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so has been one of the wonderful tracks. Yeah. Wonderful? Yeah. Okay. I may <laughs> say 10 out of 10. He said part of the <laughs> gorilla trek was it's all about the hunt and finding it and looking at them. No, it isn't. Bring it to the hut. Bring it to the tent, sit it outside, I'll look at it for a bit, shift it. <laughs> <laughs> That's seeing a gorilla. Carl, we're often accused of bullying you. This is a, a recurring thing, isn't it, that we bully you? But both of us, and, Carl, and Ricky in particular, is always concerned about your well-being. Whatever. Um, particularly in Alaska, <laughs> if you recall. You don't believe it? I don't well, believe I'm not going to be eaten by a polar bear. But yeah, he does when you had your medical, though. I found out oh, that you didn't let him test your prostate. What? Did you? No. Prostate. No. But that's, that's... Why not? In the UK alone, more people die every year from prostate cancer than being savaged by a polar bear. It's a bit of a weird time to bring it up when I'm in the middle of nowhere. It's one of the <laughs> biggest killers, right? And, and that's just a simple test. So a doctor pops his finger up your anus and he goes, yep, <laughs> you're all clear. And that's you relax for another year. Uh, I, I don't understand why you're suddenly caring about this now. I've got <laughs> little battery left on this phone. I'm wearing the battery out. If right. something happens, I'm dead. Right. He's my best mate. Sue me. I'm worried about him. Yeah, yeah. No, mm. but why isn't there ever anything about how's your blood pressure? Or how are oh. your feet? You, you're in the cold. Are you warm enough? Are you... No, because... it was none of that. It was, yes, why don't you get a finger up your ass? <laughs> because often there are no <laughs> symptoms. Well, I don't want it done. I know you don't, but it's good for you. So, um, can we... Bring the doctor out, please. Right, well, this is a waste of time. Oh, this is Frank. Um, Frank. Frank. <laughs> you all right? You all right? Good to see you. There's the uh, consultant urologist Frank. at um, St Bart's. Yeah, St that... Bart's. Yeah. The, the thing about uh, prostate cancer is you can be perfectly well and yet still have uh, prostate cancer. And one of the ways that we can detect if that may be a problem is a rectal examination. The thing with them um, just uh, feeding... I don't them. want a finger up the arse, though. No, you keep right. going on about this. Right. I've told you time and time again. I mean, I presume but, there's yeah. a lot of ill people knocking around that Frank should be looking at. Instead, he's here <laughs> debating with you two whether you know, should be finger up the arse. How long will it take if you did it now? If you went... No, wait, how long would... 15 seconds. 15, 15 seconds. That's a long time, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. What are you looking for? <laughs> what we're looking for, OK, it's two things we're looking for. One is the size of the prostate gland. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> it's the consistency of it. In other words, what it, what it feels like. It's a, it's a quick, simple thing to do. Carl, can I tell you what's going to happen? It's going to be about <laughs> 10 seconds. He's going to say, you're all clear. You're going to say, what was the fuss about? And you know you haven't got prostate there cancer. Is, but not, yeah. not today. There's no better time. <laughs> it's, it's, not not about it. it's that you and I and the cameras and that are making it a bit intense. Oh, we've Maybe got if a private room. privately to We've got a private room. room. We've got a private room. <laughs> <laughs> You 
went in. You stay in. <laughs> oh, oh shit. Can you um, show Frank and Carl to the <laughs> front of What the fuck? He's about to do it. Uh, oh shit. Oh shit. Testicles while you're there. Ah, uh, yeah. They had it set up? Yeah, it's a little bit. I mean, I know it's important thing to have done. Yeah. It's just the way they go about it. Mm. I've been travelling around the world in dangerous places. They've never cared about me before. Mm. Yet today, they keep going on about having this done. <laughs> Men are embarrassed about these things, you know? We're not used to these things. But for the sake of something that really is very quick and, and painless, <laughs> we're talking about potentially saving a life. And before you know it, it's done and it's over. No, but it's just I don't know. <laughs> I did this day in day out. <laughs> That's what you do, seriously, every day. Yeah, every day on my way to life. That's what I do. And are you going to move up and do, get to do something better, or is this your future now? <laughs> <laughs> it's just part of the job. You know. A lot of time I spend in, in operating. A lot of time I spend in clinics. So how many people are you doing a day? Ten to twenty, maybe. And which finger is it? Is it a big one or a little one? <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Why not just a little? Because the prostate lies a little bit, a little bit in. If you get your hand, you couldn't. You, you just couldn't do that. With your little finger. So you're going round the corner. You've got to go in and round. So you've got to go in and then a slight, slight twist. It's, it's the thought is worth it. Ah, is it? It's the thought of it. All right. And okay. I, I, <laughs> yeah, let's do it then. Come on. Do you wear gloves? Oh, that's right. Yes. Do you know Richard Blackwood? Yes, the uh, comedian, yes. Yeah, he had, he had a, a colonic <laughs> on telly, yeah. never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that's far worse. So, let's get a rest of your hooks Then, what you need to do is you need to bend your knees up. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> get, get some lubricating gel. I'll just... Right, so what I'm going to do is... I'm, I mean, I'm just going to pop yeah. you. Pop your cards down. Bend your knees up a bit more. Come towards <laughs> me a bit more. So you yeah, just catch your mouth and say, okay. Take a deep breath. Deep breath. And out, okay. And relax, breathe normally. I'm just going to pop a finger in there, okay. Deep breath, well done. Jesus! Fucking hell. I that's surely enough, isn't it? Right, you're touching a lung. <laughs> <laughs> Your prostate's fine. Whee! Oh, God. Well done. Brilliant. Oh, man. I don't think it's something people pay a no, <laughs> subscription for, to be honest. In HD. Well done. Cheers for that, then, Frank. Now, you are a doctor, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Represent the men who will never have it done, some of which will die of prostate cancer. Genuinely. I haven't quite got over it. My heart's pounding still because it doesn't know what's gone on. My body's <laughs> gone, what just happened then? <laughs> no one's ever been that high up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. So you're a human magnet. Mm -hmm, they're magnet. Ma magnet. Ma magnet. Oh, yeah, that's so tacky. <laughs> Look, they're not even, they're not yeah, special or anything. What is going on? I've never heard of such a thing. He just, Handy he's when out shopping. Thin. When when you go food shopping. Carrier bags these so. days are really weak. Very thin. He comes out of Waitrose. Done. <laughs> I can't think of anything where you go, brilliant. I'm a magnet. When do you need to be a magnet? What superpower would you like, though? I came up with one. Bullshit. <laughs> I'd be bullshit, man. There's so many meetings going on where you know people are bullshitting. I just like to walk in. I wouldn't need a special costume. Just dress like this. And I'd fly in. I'd go bullshit. <laughs> You're talking bullshit, and they'd go, oh, "It's bullshit, man." And I go, well, "Yeah, I, it is bullshit, man." You're talking bullshit, and eventually people would stop talking shit. Uh -huh. That could take off. I quite uh -huh. like. I, mean, I know you said you didn't want a costume, but if I could get a little costume for you, what colour would it be? I don't need a costume. No, but you don't need it, but if I got one for you, what would it have? No, I don't need all that, because that's just wasting time. That's more bullshit. How do we know you're a bullshit, bullshit man? Because I flew in. 
Well, you, you so you can fly. fly. So your superpower is saying bullshit, but you can <laughs> also fly. Yeah, but but also people know if I've said it's bullshit, they know they were talking bullshit. Yeah, but but wait. That's my superpower. Wait, no, 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 no. No, your superpower is surely flying as well. You didn't, you didn't... <laughs> we could all say bullshit. No, no, yeah. the flying is necessary because of the amount of bullshit that's going but on. But if you can fly. <laughs> but if I can't fly, how am I going to get a rep? There's loads of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Keep jumping in a cab? No way. I'm going to be busy all day. <laughs> no, I haven't invented this. It's not my fault you can or can't fly. No, Calm but, down. I know, but I'm saying if it was my superpower, I'd want to fly in. Yes, uh, my point... I don't want a costume because I'd be constantly wearing that costume no. because of the amount of bullshit that's being said. Yes, I understand that. So, you, so your point is this. Everyone can tell bullshit, but mm -hmm. you need to fly to get there quick and get it out Just in the open. Can it quick? Yeah. If someone starts spouting. How can bullshit? you hear them? Because so you can yeah. super, super hearing as well. As well. Yeah. <laughs> so you can hold on. So wait a minute, right? Can you see? Can you see where they are? Or can you just? I'm just hearing it. So if there was a meeting, right, going on in Leeds now, <laughs> and there was a bloke going, well, if you invest in this company, if you give me one million, I can guarantee you, you will make an extra million right. by the year. I will double. I will. <laughs> I will double your investment in one year. What? Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it would work. Yeah, you can put that as deep I know because honestly, that's years and years of people spouting uh, it. Yeah. Meetings ever since being neck mm -hmm. eye. Mm. It's like that's that's all you ever hear. Okay, but in, how in would programs, you know? in X so Factor? You... Honestly, X Factor will keep me busy. Okay. Just yeah. The amount of shite. Yeah. That is being told to people in that, and uh, all that crying, that'd be the next one. I don't know what I call it. That thing when girls do that now, I don't know where that's come from. When they're getting a tear coming on, they go like that. <laughs> I want to cry. <laughs> you can stop doing that. Yeah. Good <laughs> uh, <laughs> man. Oh, my God. Oh, I can know. That does stink. Have a whiff of that. Oh, no, it did. No. I did it. Oh, no, I, I found that I've enjoyed food more <laughs> since I've got back from Japan. Because you appreciate just nice food. Oh, yeah, but that's only because you're only saying it's not nice because it's different. That I mean, no, it wasn't nice in oh. Japan. I was proper struggling. I was losing weight and I was getting moany because I was starving. And there was nothing. I was going around saying, have you just got any toast? And they look at you like, no. Oh. And they give you like a squid bollock. <laughs> <laughs> There's just nothing. That's for breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like they save the weird shit for, for tea. That's breakfast. <laughs> they start you off with the weird <laughs> stuff. The hard stuff. And do you know what? Ooh. I didn't tell them, the people who were away with me. But I was struggling uh. that much. And two mornings, to try and get through it, I was eating strepsils. Because I was found that my, my taste buds went numb and strepsils. they didn't have a clue what was going on. And I just was shoving stuff in. <laughs> it was strep sauce. Something like a pretzel. I'm a mid-bit. I'm a little big bit <laughs> I'm a mid-bit. Don't yeah. start saying you don't understand me you now. You can't eat it. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm going to be sick. There's something in the middle of it that's really grim. <laughs> I'm going to be sick in the Japanese garden. Pretty good yeah. now at just shoving anything in. I've eaten tacos. <laughs> I'm not that fussy. I've stuck my hands in rhino shit. Yeah. Had a taste of that. This isn't me being a bit, ooh, mm. it's fucking horrible. <laughs> Apparently that's that's like the, the start of sushi. That's where it all Jews. began with that. Jews. How did it Jews carry on? Someone shit say, what is this shit? Yeah, Pack that in, stop Duly serving known. that, and that Duly should have been the end of sushi. 170 yeah. quid. Okay, what much. do you recommend? What, what should they just, get over there? Just have a look at any other country's menu. <laughs> Dip into any restaurant, get a menu and go, oh, right, that's what people like eating. Yes, it is, not phlegm. <laughs> <laughs> just something normal. Uh, it's bloody massive, oh, yeah. when she comes out of the water. The hippo in the house. Oh, my God, it's letting its own. What's my salute? That is mental. That is mad. My dad didn't let the cat in the lounge. <laughs> Fucking hippo in here. That was the best of everything. An animal here that normally kills people, right? It's the number one killer of <laughs> hippo, right? You have to trek. You have to stay well back. You can't see it. You've got to look at hippos through binoculars. Suddenly, there I am in a house where someone's got one as a pet. A hippo in the house. Tea on demand. Biscuits when you want them, hippo in the front room. That is the ideal. 
<laughs> and I always see him in the same surroundings. Because it's in cruel. A lake. It's not cruel. In this case, it can it go free. It would have been dead. It would have been dead, it was saved. But could I just say that wild animals should never be kept as pets? You can't suddenly start keeping wild animals in council houses in case you pop round for a biscuit and want to see one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that for me, I'll never forget it. It's a surreal moment. You, you've seen hippos out in the wild. Uh, boring. boring. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen hippos in their natural habitat. Boring. What, what chair are you sitting in? <laughs> How good the carpet? It be, Where's the carpet you thought get? <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me you'd rather queue up at the zoo to see some animal sat like that on a rock looking fed up than walking into a house not knowing what's in there, going, oh, what's in here? Wandering in, oh, that nice plasma you've got. Oh, nice sofa. There's a gorilla in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, taking an animal like that and seeing it in normal surroundings, it makes it even weirder. It's amazing. I'll never forget it. I'll forget a lot of the other things. But the hippo in the house was a highlight. Hippo in the house was brilliant. That and the <laughs> volcano, they're the highlights of the whole yeah. thing. Fuck you now. Yeah, for real. Why was the volcano so amazing? Just because it's madness, it's dangerous. You stood on the edge of it. It makes you realise that the world is alive. You don't but think what? about that, do you, when you're walking yeah, about? Yeah, I'd rather have one in my front room, though. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd go in, I'd go, oh, nice plasma. Yeah, new carpet. Volcano. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have some marshmallows. <laughs> I'm not walking. Uh, I've got one here. He's <laughs> <laughs> got little ears, uh, long arms, short legs. Is this your speech? There's a lot of birds. Oh, yeah. Um, isn't, that, isn't that a tragedy that some of these species could be gone in a few years? The mountain gorilla that you saw. Now, yeah, there's only 700 and odd of them so left. So precious. So precious. And yet you didn't really want to trek for it. You'd have rather it came round your house. With I wouldn't want them wiped out. We're saying they're the closest thing to human. So what's wrong in having them in your house? That's a very yeah. human thing to do. Treat them like a human if they're very close to being human. Come on in. <laughs> Sit down. All right. Of course I don't agree with them dying. There's people who kill them just for their hands so they can have an ashtray mm. of a gorilla hand. How it doesn't even work. Well, it doesn't work. That no. doesn't even work as an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> the ash is going to roll through its fingers. It's a bit chavvy as well as a design. Yeah. My furniture wouldn't work with that. It's nothing to do with is it nasty and all that. It's a horrible thing. You mean if it was a fake one made of... I'm just saying a hand. Forget <laughs> it's a gorilla. A human hand. If it was a piece of art, a ceramic... It doesn't work. No, it's the cruelty that I find yes, disgusting. Yes, but it doesn't work. Not the design. It's a yeah. beautiful design, a gorilla hand. Work. When it's attached to his fucking arm. But a hand there... <laughs> look, yeah. it doesn't work properly, does it? Yes, Why we're not talking about whether it? it works. We're talking well, about how vile and disgusting it is. It is. Yeah. But think about it. If there's anyone out there who is vile and disgusting, it doesn't work as a, as a thing on a table <laughs> and putting your fag on it. Like, mm. Go like that, the ash rolls through the fingers. No, no, you're it doesn't work. <laughs> That's the message that should be out there. Don't have a gorilla around, not because it's cruel and that, which it is, but it doesn't work. <laughs> Double phone message. If his head was there, cut its head off, you can put fruit in it. That works. <laughs> <laughs> it's cruel, but I'm just saying it doesn't work. One of my favourite uh, things about the show well, someone told him isn't just getting you to phase. exotic places or out of your comfort zone, it's you interacting with people. Are, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. I love this. <laughs> are you gay? No, I've got, I've got a girlfriend, 17 years. Fuck <laughs> boy. <laughs> hey? Fuck, 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 fuck. Safety's on, that's an AK-47. Yeah, I've heard of them. Crisp, biscuit, fruit, yes. wiggly worm. <laughs> the dinner My for the favorite, king. But I just think, when he was, you know, cooking for the king, and then he got caught up in the moment, like it suddenly is kitchen. When they go, they want another pudding. Who does? All of them. I've only got one dinner custard. It's like suddenly, <laughs> oh, but he's the king. Not in my kitchen. <laughs> I'm Carl Cookie Pilkinson. Uh, pudding, uh, chocolate, uh, sponge, custard. Thank you. White warm. <sighs> God, I'm knackered. No wonder Rams is always swearing. Oh. Yeah. I think they want another round of cake. Who does? All of them. I haven't got enough. I bought one box of custard. <laughs> you took it so seriously. Because what's the point in doing anything if you don't? Mm. Good uh, point. 
I mean, there's some great characters in this. One of my favourites is the Russian taxi driver. I'd love to get him over here and you you show him around. No, he wouldn't, though. I was stuck in a car with him in busy traffic in Russia. It was a nightmare. Oh, you do not value life too much and got good life insurance. The brakes in this car just fail. It's the worst <laughs> car I've ever bought. It's British and I never thought a car could be made that bad. <laughs> I think we found the Russian equivalent of car. Yeah, shit all over He's become stuck in a car with this miserable bastard. But he was saying the same thing. He felt you were a miserable bastard, <laughs> not you. Russia, though, is quite... It felt like that. It felt like you're not meant to be happy. Maybe he's your bog-standard Russian. Everything's quite hard. Signs, the text on buildings. I've never been a lover of font. I think there's too many fonts. Right. But after being over there, they've got, like, one, and it's in capital, it's yelling at you. <laughs> Even if it's something nice. Kittens for sale! <laughs> <laughs> Everything's... In <laughs> shock. Now, despite the fact you didn't really get on with Russia, the Trans-Siberian Express uh, journey actually threw up some of your favourite things. You ended up um, oh, at the Dwarf Village. Uh, Great. Little people land. I thought it was really good. I mean, how can you fault that? It was just slick. You know, you had, like, a little Rich and Judy come out at the beginning. They sort of introduced everyone. Different singers. It was, it was like our life, but miniature. It's like Little Britain's Got Talent. It was a little Peter Andre who came out, did a little sing-song. Little woman with glasses on, Lily Allen. It, it was just really familiar. Enjoyed it. <laughs> and people at home, you'll probably get some going, it's not right. Shouldn't be looking at dwarfs singing and dancing on a stage. That's but right. we do it with X Factor. The early stages of that are a load of divs. <laughs> Everyone knows it. The people come in, aren't pretending they're here just to see singing and dancing. They know they're dwarfs. Everyone's having a good day. What's wrong with it, really? <laughs> so if I was a dwarf, I'd definitely come here. Wouldn't hang around at home. There's nothing for you at home. You don't get looked after like this. You don't get given little houses and a stage to perform on and all that. I've always thought being small would be all right. Being a dwarf, I'd rather be a dwarf than like Steve, who's almost a giant. <laughs> the world's not made for a giant. Being a dwarf, being on a plane, loads of leg room, king-sized Twix is massive. <laughs> The world's overpopulated, especially in China, and they're like over a billion people. Perfect. You want to be smaller. More room. They need more of them, actually. And then I look at it and I think, is that is that how we're meant to have evolved? Maybe that is the future. Maybe we're the odd ones out here, <laughs> when you think about it. Be a dwarf. That's not good advice. Be a dwarf. <laughs> well, how? How? Right. Fair enough. I'm just saying that it was one of the best times I had, that. And I think more people should go and visit, because that is helping them out. And something they haven't sort of tapped into, but I think they could make money from, is sort of renting themselves out to people who don't know if they want a kid or not. Because <laughs> even though they were grown men, there's something that makes you want to sort of go like that on their head. Too many people jump into having kids, they don't know if they want them or not. Yeah, Even yeah. Pets. But would the dwarf have to affect the mannerisms of a child? That... They kind of do. The way they are around you, they're sort of laughing and joking. But that's what a normal person is, and most people are sort of laughing <laughs> and joking. Right, what's your idea? Then? What would you get them, get them to do? Get them to do anything. But they haven't got any work over there. But they can work. Doing what? Put yeah. it in offices. No, they can't, because the, the tables are too big for them and stuff, aren't they? You've got to start accommodating them. Oh, and nobody wants man. to. But we do that with wheelchair access. I'm just saying, you're all a bit like, oh, you can't say that. Well, yes, you can say that, because there's a load of old bollocks. What do you want to say? That we're I'm just saying there's nothing wrong with it. If one of them wants to act as a kid, rental, <laughs> he should be allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> if one of them, I'm just saying, like if one of them... Like <laughs> kid rental. Kid uh, rental with dwarf. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 now, of course, we idea. asked viewers of the show to ask any questions that, uh, <laughs> that they'd like to ask of you, and we can put them to you. This questions. is from um, Sarah from St. Louis in Missouri. Um, Hi, Carl. Just Missouri. wondering, why are you friends with Ricky? You have completely opposite personalities, and he loves to annoy you. What do you get out of this relationship? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we do have opposite personalities. I think we're very similar. No. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> but I think that's what I like, the challenge of it. It's like having a dangerous pet. 
<laughs> you never know, it could end up killing you. And that's what you're like with this trip. You've nearly done me in a few times. I can be quite happy and I go, oh, I feel a bit too content. Mm. Call Ricky up. Two minutes, that's all I need. <laughs> I shouldn't called him. Go on. Makes you feel alive. Uh, Bucket yeah. list. What do you want to do, Carl? I want to drive down Route 66. All right, then. Uh, yeah, cuddle party. What are we doing? You at the cuddle party. <laughs> uh, I, I mean... don't understand why you didn't just have a cuddle with someone. Well, with strangers? Yeah. Uh. What difference does it make? I think a hug the is there crew. for a reason. What's a hug there for? Well, you hug someone <laughs> when they're fed up. Mm. Well, I'm fed up now. No, you're not, though. Well, look! So you're abusing the Look, look. Carl, you're gonna get Carl, one. look. Yeah, well, you're not going to get one when you're doing that. <laughs> but we're I not strangers. I'm a bloke anyway. Well, no, I don't hug in You general. said it wasn't to do with male or female, you said it was to do with being a stranger's. I know you better than anyone apart from Suzanne. Yeah, well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm still not happy with that. How would you feel if I scooted up behind you to spoon you? Would that be OK? Well, that's worse than a cuddle. <laughs> that is a cuddle. That's more, that's more than a cuddle. Right? <laughs> what if I put my back to you and I face the other way? That's all right, cos that's just cos we're all... It's crowded. Touching like that, that's just, that's just like being on a so tube. So I could do that? But you don't touch people on the tube. <laughs> you do. In London, you do. It's a nightmare in rush hour. Really? You'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> It's ridiculous going around cuddling yeah. strangers. But mates always hug. Do you want to hug me? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah only you if have it's. I'm not left out. You have a hug. You no, know each other like this. No, I'm not having a hug. Come on. Get off. Come on, have a hug. Come on, have a hug. No, no, this, this, this is. is right. Come on, hug. I'm not happy with this. I'm getting down there. It was like. Come on. So, hold on. I think you should be on the floor and we should have a little man with you. Do you want to get on top of me, Steve? Let's have a little man with you. I want a piece of carrot. I know, but you can have a little. Love man with you. Oh, that is. Oh. See? What the hell's going on? What are you doing? Oh, God! Well, if you've got one, I have too, Steve. <laughs> Is that Frank again? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it, your program? The program? <laughs> the program, the name. Idiot Abroad. The board. Uh, Idiot Abroad. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> I'll write it down. <laughs> uh, Idiot Abroad. Uh, abroad. Abroad. <laughs> Idiot what? Abroad. That's the program. Ah, uh, Igor Breed. The name of the program. What you back back, no? Idiot! I'm bored! Yeah, don't shout Idiot. about it. Idiot! I'm bored, I know, I didn't want it. It was meant to be Carl Pilkington's 7-1. Idiot! One. Yeah, I know. I'm bored! Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Idiot, damn! Yeah, there's a name. Yeah. Idiot. Div. Knobhead. No pet. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not idiot. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. a friend came up with the title. You are not idiot. No. I don't know the name. I know, I know. I know. Ah. But, but ignore the name. Idiot. I'm bored. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let <laughs> <laughs> me ask you a, another question from our idiot. viewers. Oh, Here's one from Gareth Sutcliffe, and he says Carl, French novelist Marcel Proust once wrote, the voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. With that in mind, huh. could you sum up your travel experiences and offer your view of travel in a similarly meaningful quote? <laughs> Don't piss ass about travelling, getting jet lag, eating food you don't like, shut your eyes and imagine stuff. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. I've had the shit. <laughs> that was an amazing quote. <laughs> that was an amazing quote. This is good. Kills you down. Uh. That's going to give you a headache, not get rid of one. <laughs> Look how complicated it is just for a toilet. Yeah, you have the, the skill of Bill Gates. Just have a shit. You can't do any of that. You can't do that stuff. <laughs> but it's a robot. Body pump. <laughs> it's a crisp picker up or a... If you want some crisps but you don't <laughs> want to get crisps on your hands, you use a crisp picker-upper. 
I like the fact that you've got a bit of a rebellious streak in you sometimes. You go off road, and I, I called you when you're in Japan, and you drop this bombshell that you've finally decided the one thing you want to do before you die, and that was to invent something. And you said it's because you wanted to leave a legacy, which I thought was brilliant. Well, just because you you're dead longer than you're alive, aren't you? Okay. I'm coming up with stuff all the time. That's why I think this is my strength that hasn't been used yet. I can't do this sort of thing, really, this sort of job of being on the telly. <laughs> Look at Dyson. It's only a vacuum cleaner. Yet he's up there with Einstein and everything. He's well rated. Just for a vac. And I reckon I can come up with something better than that. It doesn't have to be a cure for cancer. I'm not going to come up with that. All I can do is come up with something that I needed at the time and that I think other people will go, do you know what, that's a bloody good invention. So something that benefits mankind? Yes. OK. He, he, he pitched me the idea over the phone and I said, I'm out. <laughs> OK, <laughs> pitch it to me now then. Right. In Japan, they don't have these... You mean they don't have chairs? They don't have chairs? Yeah, of course they have chairs. You try finding <laughs> one. You sit on the floor all the time. When you go in a restaurant, you sit down cross-legged. You get a flat arse and your legs ache. Yep. <laughs> so you've invented what? It's the Pilco pump pant. I'm sorry, the Pilco pump pant? It's a pair of pants with a cushion built in the arse. <laughs> the inflatable pant. Stops your arse from getting wet. For men <laughs> or women. Do you know the thing you put on your neck? when you're on long flights. Yeah. I've used that. That isn't how the finished thing would look when I, when I make it. You know, this is a prototype. OK. Yeah, Pilco pump. That could work. I sold some on a shopping channel. You're slagging them off, you're saying, I'm out. Watch this. But this is the lovely man I was talking about. It is our lovely Carl to bring you some trousers. All right, how's it going? <laughs> good one, good one. Morning, everyone. Hope you're well. It's the pants we're selling today. Look at that. Not bad, that, is it? You've come on the telly to flog me a pair of pants. We know about pants. We've seen pants before. You haven't, have you? You haven't seen on, these right? pants. It's that bit there. That's the seller. That's what we're here for. That's what we're talking about. It's the Pilco pump pant. The way it works is you've got a big zip. A good quality zip. Look at that. Doesn't stick. It's a quality zip. <laughs> this is it. Alright? Open it. There it is. There's the cushion. You might have one of these already. Shove it in there. You know you're gonna be sat down for a while. You're waiting for that order of the sofa. You're waiting at the bus stop. You haven't got a seat because the queue's big. The buses are delayed. Where are you gonna sit? Well the beauty is you can sit where you want. Sit on concrete. Sit on the road. Not on the road. That's dangerous. <laughs> sit on the pavement. Sit on grass. How good is that? And there's only 15 pairs available. Uh, 15 <laughs> pairs in the whole world. Do you want to be one of the 15? Still 15 left. To have the Pilco pump pants. Look at him. Uh, Look at him in them. There you go. It's, so ugly. it's oh, terrible. <laughs> show you how easy it is again. It looks like some sort of medical yeah. procedure, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> they think that you, you think you've uh, had yeah, your arse removed. Get rid of that. Look at that for a pocket. <laughs> <laughs> like I say, we carry more and more stuff around. Think of carrying stuff in that. In the, your arse. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Tops, iPads, all that lot. Fruit. Look at that. Look at the size of that. Who's pair. putting a laptop Milk. in their, in their arse? Bread. You nip out to the shop. Uh, bread. 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 Okay, okay girl. You're trying to find pence a bag at the moment at the supermarket. Yeah. Yeah. It's in there. No, I'm not buying a bag. You just turn round at the cash point, stick your milk in there, stick your bread in there, off you go. A big, big pocket. <laughs> You've got milk this. and bread. Health and safety these days. Damn, you nine left. There. You yeah. like Damn, they're selling. Look how they're hey, selling. You buy some for your young kid. Yeah. You're walking by the canal, he falls in. Is he a good swimmer? <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. But if he falls in, he's got something to keep him going. Eight look, upside down, like that. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> like, he's drowning. <laughs> 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 There's two left. He saw them all. A river. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> anything else? Anything else goes? Hang on, let's see how the orders are going. Have we had anyone calling in yet? <laughs> two people on the phone. What do they want? Do they want to talk to me or is that just... <laughs> they've gone. We've sold them. Job done. Brilliant. <laughs> yes. These are they look in real life. This is the Pilky Pump Pant. <coughs> Pilco Pump Pant. Yep. Okay. 
I mean, it looks ridiculous. It yeah. does look ridiculous. So does most fashion these days. OK, no, good, yeah, no, yeah, if it was... Right. Yeah, no, you're right, yeah, it's all right. Sit down. Yeah. Sit, well, why are you sitting well, here? Yeah, you don't need a chair. That's doubled up. You must be too comfortable. <laughs> sit on the floor. Right. Sit on the floor there, cos that would be... And I suppose right. particularly useful if you've added a finger up the eyes. Right, there you go. <laughs> so... Right. Yeah. Dead comfy. Yeah. Really comfy. <laughs> um, Carl, can you go and... Bring me my sort of bread and milk and stuff that I've... Have you got five pence for a carry bag? <laughs> I, I haven't, no. I haven't. Hang on, don't worry about that. See you in a minute. What do you want? Bread and milk. Some groceries, yeah. Look, imagine walking <laughs> in the street wearing that. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, it looks... <laughs> it looks <laughs> fucking ridiculous. He doesn't know. It he does. Doesn't it really looks like that. Yeah. You, no, no one, no one will walk down the street like that. Hang on. Hold on, Carl. I've bought you. Um, no, look, look, Carl. Carl. There's no restrictions. I've bought you a couple of cups and saucers. Yeah. Can you take? I've bought you these for you. you got a bag. I haven't got a bag. No, just pop them well, in there. Pop them in. You, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just. Oh, can you? Shove them in. Yeah. Just put them in there. That is not going to work. The, the, so right. what's, oh, so, yeah. Let's say for that, yeah. All right, OK, all right, yeah, go ahead. Run for the bus, right. mate. Quick, the, quick, the bus, run, 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 quick, quick. <laughs> Suzanne's at home. Oh, <laughs> here comes Carl. Here comes Carl. <laughs> With our new crockery. Honestly, that isn't pulling me down or anything. That is fine. <laughs> That's... <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. No, well, you'd bubble wrap them normally, wouldn't you? You have to give me a pair. Unbelievable. <laughs> There's too much noise. <laughs> uh, I mean, who puts this in this stuff? I'd have to have a handbag or something. Come on. Right? <laughs> all right. Wow. I just want to say, Carl, I was impressed all the way around with the stuff you've done. I like the fact you didn't do stuff you didn't want to do. I thought it showed um, real drama. And resolve. You weren't just a puppet. You weren't just an idiot, an adrenaline junkie. You were doing things that mattered to you. Um, is there anything though you didn't do that you wish you had? If you could do it again, would you go? Do you know what? I will do that now. I will bungee jump, or I will. Is there okay, anything jump, you yeah. wish you'd have done that you didn't? In Japan, I wanted to do karaoke. What would you sing? Do a bit of um, Charles and Dave.
not die. Did not die. Looked like a hundred no. ways to die. Yeah. Carl and Steve, I mean, uh, Ricky and Steve tried to kill him. <laughs> it seemed like it. Shark diving. Land diving. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> Bungee Staying jumping. Staying on a deserted island. Yeah. Yeah. That's where rhinos man. and hippos. Monkeys, gorillas. Yeah. Man. Did it all. What an amazing trip. And then shit, he kept it off. <laughs> He capped it off by getting the um, the prostate exam done. Yeah. <laughs> that was surprising. He said, you're touching a lung. <laughs> oh, he man. said, you're a doctor, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's shit. trust right there, Carl's guys. So, you know, if you think their friendship's a little rocky, nah, they got trust, man. Yeah. I don't know how they just had that shit set up. <laughs> they had the, the camera Frank? set up. <laughs> the room set up, yeah. <laughs> Everything. Frank was there with a suit, ready to, with the finger ready. <laughs> Said, can't use the pinky. Uh, Pinky's too small. You gotta yeah. use <laughs> so You gotta wrap around. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. A great episode, man. Yeah. So we got season three next. Season three of Idiot Abroad. That is next. All right, I'm ready, man. Y'all yes. ready?